Are you pushed for time tracking down those ideal secondary English teaching aids? Well, here on Resource Review, we might be able to help. We'll be evaluating three. They are a novel set in ancient mystical Japan. It's not even really a sentence, is it? Just one word by itself when he says here, nothing. An online archive of poets reading their own poetry. We've got Anna Pestic again. When the voices... So you've got the da 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 All right, good. And a series of creative literacy textbooks. Will they get the thumbs up from our panel of experts? Well, keep watching Resource Review to find out. Joining me to recommend today's resources is Moira Beverton. Moira is a secondary English consultant at Bedfordshire LEA and secretary of NATE. Joining Moira on the panel, we have Dr. Chris Turner, a senior learning and teaching fellow at Manchester Metropolitan University Institute of Education. And joining Chris, we have English teacher Phil Beadle. Thank you very much for coming. It's great to have you on the show. So Moira, your first resource, it's a novel. It's called Across the Nightingale Floor, and it's by Leon Hearn. So tell us about this book and why you think it makes such a good resource for secondary English. Um, the book's about um, the story of a, a young boy called Takio, and um, it follows his adventures. Um, it, it's a, a book where he becomes a man um, during the course of the book. It crosses that divide between um, games narrative, which are very interesting to young people, and um, getting more interested in reading and actually reading for fun. All right. Well, thank you very much, Moira. Let's see what teachers think. We visited Tiffin School in Kingston-upon-Thames, where teacher Naomi Harbage and her Year 7s are exploring this book. And the fact that he says the end was no game. I was using um, Leon Hearn's Across the Nightingale Floor. The boys have been working on personal writing and uh, um, looking at different figurative language techniques. I did a, a basic sort of uh, bit of reading with it, reading a section with them, analysing it, getting them to feature spot, um, and then a conti a sort of continuation questions that arise from the text. Um, and then I asked them to use the skills that they learned from that to put into practice in their own writing. Well, it's, it's very thickly written. It's full of uh, very lyrical language. Um, so all those kind of classic key stage three things that we need to teach them are plentiful. There's, there are lots of, of personification and, and lots of metaphors and similes. So from that perspective, it, it works really well. Now, what's bigger about an environment than a setting? Why is it bigger? Why is it more... Detailed. Well, in a setting, it's just the background, but in an environment, there's a whole, there's emotions, and then there's also feelings between characters. It fits in perfectly with the Key Stage 3 strategy in terms of uh, the writing to explore, imagine, entertain, um, and also in terms of them, them learning to analyse. But there are, um, there are some slightly uh, uh, close-to-the-bone moments in it, which are beautifully written and are handled not in any way gratuitously, but you know, in terms of, of choosing a text to teach with, with Year 7s or 8s, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't do that with them. That's absolutely right. It's not even really a sentence, is it? Just one word by itself when he says here nothing I think it's a wonderful book I think the students were really gripped by it actually for a high ability um, or certainly a very mature year nine that then I think that it would be a good it would be a very good text to choose Well, Moira, overall, a very strong review from our teacher Naomi there seemed to really like this book. But she did mention that some of the topics covered, I know it touches on sex and violence, are a little bit close to the bone. Who is this book really aimed at? Um, yes, I suppose I wouldn't want um, anyone to think that they, you know, there is graphic um, sexual content in this book. It isn't. And in a sense, it's quite interesting to, it would be quite interesting to explore that. Um, but I would stand by the, the fact that it is a, a, a later Key Stage 3 novel. OK, well, Chris, what are your thoughts on our first resource? I agree. It's a very rich narrative. Uh, there's a real pace to it. It uh, 
rattles along you know, event after event, and certainly there are some very memorable incidents in it. However, at the end, I, I didn't feel there was the kind of richness of textual features that I'd really want to say, hey, here's a book that I could really recommend in terms of its ability to to teach a wide range of aspects. Mm. Well, Phil, what, what do you think? Is this something that should be in the library, or is it something that you could really see of use in the classroom? No, I don't think it has any place in the classroom. Um, the book, stylistically, is so poorly written, or my take on it, um, that I would struggle to, uh, to model a decent form of writing based on it. I'd, oh. Like, for instance, I've, I've excerpts of it, I've, I've taken the liberty of marking, um, and it, some of the comments I've made on it you would make on a bottom set year nine piece of work. I accept that the narrative drives along at a really fast pace and that might engage boys, but uh, you know, I would rather bring in text to a classroom that model really effective descriptive writing in that year group. Right. Well, Moira, what would you say to Phil's rather damning review of the quality of writing in this book? I think that actually being able to say to students, well, I can write as well, if not better than this, there's an opportunity there to teach a range of writing and also to engage students with novels that are out there on the shelves in bookshops at right. the moment. OK, well, I would love to invite Phil to have his right to reply, but I'm afraid we do have to move on now to Moira's second choice of resource. And this is a website. It's free. It's called The Poetry Archive. So, Moira, when there are lots of poetry websites out there, why did you choose this one? What's on it and what do you like about it? Um, I don't think there are lots of poetry websites where you can hear poets read. and It does have some of the um, GCSE poets and I liked it in the sense of students being able to go and explore poetry outside of the classroom. Um, and actually to make decisions about whether they think the poet is reading this in an effective way or not. OK. Well, to see this resource in action, we went back to Tiffin School, where Head of English, Michael Liddy, is conducting a poetry class with a little bit of help from Robert Browning. We're going to be exploring how rhythm in poetry helps to create meaning. The resource I used this morning, I used the Poetry Archive and uh, on that I used uh, Robert Browning and uh, the Robert Browning poem that's on there and the recording of his voice. See if you can hear the anapestic rhythm that he uses. I looked at it particularly um, how Browning used uh, the anapestic rhythm. Actually hearing Robert Browning's voice from, you know, 120, 30 years ago um, is, is an interesting thing. Um, and I think the way they reacted to it, they, were, they, they enjoyed it. Um, so that makes it more real, I suppose. And, and also listening to, you know, if we, had, if, we, if we were doing some more modern poetry and they could actually hear the poets themselves and so seeing that they're not these sort of disembodied it's figures out ugly there. Ugly like his, beautiful like she is, ugly like Mars. Well, what it's done is it's collected it all for you, so it's a, it's a good place to go first. Um, and there are some suggestions about how to, you know, some ideas of how you might teach poetry. You might find things there that were unlooked for, in a way. You might, sort of, you might see connections, because it does offer you, you know, if you've enjoyed this poem sort of thing, have a look at this one. Um, uh, so, yeah, it might take you off in some interesting directions. Um, it certainly could be something that you could direct, as a teacher, you could direct the students to and say, you know, have a look at this, um, tell me something that you found, tell me, try and find some links between this poem and some other poems, something like that. I think I will use the resource um, in, in my teaching. I don't think I'd base a whole lesson around it, but certainly to dip into it um, would be very useful, yeah, yeah. Right, it's very, very stressed because I'm a teacher. Well, Moira, wasn't it great to hear Robert Browning reading his own poem there? But are poets really the best people to read their work? Not necessarily, but I think that's what's quite interesting about the Poetry Archive, that you get the opportunity to make the decision. And how fantastic is that, to hear poets from, you know, 
quite a long time ago or quite recently reading their own work. It makes that, that connection for students. Yes. Well, let's see if Phil is a fan of your second resource. <laughs> but it's free, that's got to be a good thing. <laughs> what do you think? I think it's potentially an absolutely brilliant resource. I think it's at a nascent stage. For instance, out of the 14 odd poems in the Poems from Other Cultures section, there's one that's covered. Um, it's brilliant seeing the po a poet laureate actually taking his job really seriously. Um, and yes, I'd definitely use it in the classroom, probably in about five years' time when he's actually got some modern poets on there. <laughs> right, OK. So a little way to go, possibly, Chris, with the resource, but what were your thoughts? Uh, I, th I think it's absolutely brilliant. Um, and this idea of reading aloud, I think, takes us into another area of how we might actually tackle uh, poetry with, with our pupils. And I think that may be a way of demystifying poetry and also focusing on some of the essential features of poetry, like mood and atmosphere and tone. And we can introduce that vocabulary to our pupils. Phil? I think it's really useful to hear what bad readers of their own work the poets are. Like the, <laughs> Simon Armitage's deadpan delivery, I, you, a dead cat could read it with more passion and I think that could actually give the, the students a bit more confidence in their own readings. Mm. For me it's something that I would want to um, guide students to go and explore and play with. You know, actually have some fun in finding out what what happens with poetry outside of the classroom. That's, um, and I think that's it's an right. excellent resource for that. OK, well, thank you all very much. Moira, moving swiftly on then to your final choice of resource for us today. And we have it here displayed on the table, uh, a series of teacher books called English Frameworking. Can you explain this resource to us? Um, it's a very... Uh, down-to-earth and straightforward um, explanation of the main text types that you find in non-fiction. What I really like about the resource is how visual it is. It's intended for um, supporting students, less able students. Right, OK. Well, let's see what the panel think just briefly on our final resource, Chris. I get twitchy when I see kind of you know, class sets of textbooks and um, on the other hand I, I, I recognize the value of being able to to guide teachers into exploring some text types I mean we all know the danger they can become decontextualized rather reductive skills-based approaches to basically something that should be exploratory exciting innovative uh, and inventive thanks Chris Phil your thoughts on this one I think it's Ofsted that refer to this notion of death by worksheet and these these are death by 1,500 worksheets. So the, the grammatical exercises themselves are, are well constructed and of value and you know, if you couldn't be bothered to write a proper lesson then they're, they're quite useful. All right. Well, thank you all very much. I'm afraid that's all we've got time for today. Just to recap, the three resources that we looked at were Across the Nightingale Floor by Leon Hearn, published by Macmillan Children's Books, London, UK. The Poetry Archive website by The Poetry Archive. And English Frameworking series from HarperCollins Publishers Limited. For more information about all of the resources that we've talked about today, go to our website, it's teachers.tv forward slash resource review, or if you want to, email us, resource review at teachers.tv. I'd like to say a very big thank you to our panel today, to Moira, to Chris and to Phil. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you next time on Resource Review. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>